What's up, what's up, everybody? We are back here today with a, another stream for you guys, another watch along stream. Let me know if you guys can hear me. We are going to be doing another one for this Pistons games. It should be a big stream. Let me know. Celtics kind of playing with some, out some without some guys tonight. Excuse me. No Jason Tatum. No Al Horford. No Drew Holiday. But it should be a good one. Might have a co-host here with our other host, Isaac, possibly joining by here soon. So we're going to wait and see if that happens. But if not, we'll be just here with ourselves discussing this fantastic game and hopefully the Celtics can get a big victory tonight let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section here and I'll greatly appreciate and love to hear what you guys have to think of this big Celtics game tonight Friday night Yep, okay. Making sure that my audio is here. Making sure everything is good here to go. But yeah, very excited for this game. If you guys are enjoying, do enjoy this stream. If you guys are part of the family, make sure to hit that like button so we can get as many people in the stream as possible. But like I mentioned, I got to adjust another setting. Sorry. Takes a little bit to get everything set up here. I got to take that hot key on so that it does not bother us um Celtics Digest Window Capture Window Capture where's Window Capture Window Capture Found the second one. Here it is. And there we go. We'll do the other one as well. Awesome. So like I mentioned, got a big game here tonight with the Celtics and the Detroit Pistons. Unfortunately, could not get the other uh, scoreboard to work. For some reason, it was blacked out on my screen. I don't know what that is, so I'm going to talk to my boss and try to figure out how to figure out that. But like I mentioned, we will be having that going as well. We'll have the score going at the same time as the game as we react to this Celtics matchup. I'm very excited for the game tonight. I'm expecting some big time performances from some of our bench players. And that's, I think, going to be a huge thing to see with this Celtics squad. Like I've mentioned, I really like some of our bench players that we've had so far this year. I think that they've been you know, doing a pretty good job for the Boston Celtics. I'd like to see how they do. I know that there is also another surprise with Tillman getting a starting nod tonight with no Horford and no Tatum. He's going to be getting the start, which is going to be really, really cool to see and a big time moment for him. All right, I think we're going to be... But yeah, I should be excited. This game is going to be, you know, a big one. I'm excited for it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down yeah. below. There we go. That should be fixed. I think that should be good to go now. I think I fixed that. Yeah, I'm just trying to manage a bunch of stuff. Luckily, the game has not started yet. Thank you to everyone that's been in here. Sorry I haven't been able to look at everything. I'm trying to get everything started up. Can't have a live stream without T Snizzle. That is exactly right. Why are the comments not coming up for T Snizzle? Oh no. I want my comments for T Snizzle to pop up. Where are my comments for T Snizzle? one of our 
big time stream big time friends here on Celtics Digest come into you know all of our streams. I don't know what's going on. My computer is just doing a bunch of things. That's good. Um, let me fix this. Let's see if this can work to fix the chats. So I want to have the chats pop up as well for you guys. That's a big part of it. Okay, let's see. The chats now pop up. There we go. T Snizzle is here, like we mentioned always. Always in the live stream. What an entrance. Thank you, T Snizzle. Sorry, I haven't been really engaged. This game hasn't really hasn't started yet. I've been trying to get things set up, but like I mentioned, thank you to the five people that are, are in the stream, to the four likes that we received as well. We greatly appreciate it. I think Isaac is going to be joining us as well, which will be another fun thing as well. So we can have two people breaking down the game for you guys tonight. But like I mentioned, in the starting lineup, we have Peyton Pritchard, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Xavier Tillman, who's getting his first start for the Boston Celtics, and Kristaps Porzingis, which would be fantastic. And then for the Pistons, they have a plethora of injuries. They got Jaden Ivey, Cade Cunningham, Troy Brown Jr., Tosan Avabuanwam, sorry if I butchered that, and James Wiseman. No, uh, no more Isaiah Stewart for them. No more of the... Uh, Sword Thompson as well as he's hurt. And Isaac is here. Awesome. I think he is here. So we'll get this set up on the live duo here. Bruce, can you hear me? Yep. Here we are. All right. I'll not share my camera just to make. Are you going to show you the camera for the, the thing, the stream? Yes, I, I am. Okay. I got this. Yeah. Let me see. just got to fix you as well. But yes, we have Isaac here who's going to be doing the watch along stream with us as well. So it should be fantastic. We already have 10 people in here, which is great as well. More people to join. More voices to be talking about the Boston Celtics. Let me see if the comments will still work on this screen as well for T-Snizzle. We have no reason to lose this game. Exactly, T-Snizzle. This needs to be a, a big W for us. Unfortunately, I do not have your name tag, Isaac, since I recently got a new computer, so. It's all good. It's all good, Bruce. It's, I'm hoping the Celtics get this dubbed tonight. I believe they will. They've been playing well the last couple of the games. Yeah. That, I'm excited. Same here. I'm excited to see Xavier Toman get the starting nod as they, as he hasn't been able to play and start for the Celtics this, this year. Cade Cunningham as well is playing tonight, and he did not play on Monday night, so that's a big thing as well for the Celtics. Yes, it is. I couldn't agree more. All right, let me see. Let me add this over here as well. Move that, that down. Right, and oh, piston strike first with a lob. Not that great, Cade Cunningham. Derek White's bringing the ball up here. All right, now that I got you here, I can get you all fixed up. that good you can see and if I share this screen I believe you could see right so let me do that for you and then I think we should be good share that and boom. no you can see the stream and everything right yeah I can see uh, yes awesome 
little bit bigger have you right there as well and perfect I got that now let me pull up the chat as well and the game time ticker so the game time ticker is there and the chat is there as well awesome so now we have everything set up I believe we have everything to go now we can kind of just break down the game as we watch along if you ever feel like you want to say anything happening or going on let us know I'll also have the chat as well we have T Snizzle. What is the Discord link? I can pop it up as well so you can see this as well so you can read some of the chats if you want to look in the live stream as well. But the Discord link is down below in the description. It's in the community pages. If you check out our recent videos, you can just click the Discord link down below there. You join the Discord and you can interact with other Celtics fans on there. And soon we're going to be doing some radio call in type of live streams. And I believe we're going to be using Discord. So that's the place where if you want to get involved on that, that is awesome. You guys can join. And then we got another one here from Banner18 Mind Trip saying, Banner18 in 2024, the bench kicks butt. This is what I was missing the last couple of years. Uh, that's what I agree. I think we've seen some big time improvements from Peyton Pritchard and Cornette. You don't think so? No, I know. I agree. I, I agree with you. I don't, I'm not shaking my head at a oh. disagreement. I agree. And I mean, th in this day and age of basketball, the way the basketball played, I feel like you always needed a good bench. And mm -hmm. this, not have one even on their recent. A title attempt run yes they did not that's that was killer mm -hmm. no you're exactly right on that that was definitely their achilles heel i would say because when tatum and brown weren't you know going off and doing great things for this celtic squad it was definitely tough for them to you know maintain some scoring versus the golden state warriors Cade cunningham is just a really good basketball player just got a nice basket versus celtics right there though yeah, I, I mean, it, it's sad. I want it, I'll be honest, just to speak on the Celtics. Like, you would think that you want to take this game lightly, but Detroit's, in my opinion, Detroit's record doesn't really show what actually the talent on their on the team. It's not like they're they have really bad players on there. They just got players that just don't know what they're doing yet. And I don't want to throw Monty Williams on the bus, but I mean, I feel like they're a, a few players away from i mean obviously i know the celtic fans are going to rag there are a few players away from potentially becoming back to the celtics you know just they they haven't this is a good lesson for them so i agree with you on that i think that they're trying to go into the like that houston rockets build from this season that we saw with their veterans i think that was like an attempt that they made unfortunately it didn't really work out with them maybe not having as many not I me, mean, not grizzled veterans, but I think that Fred Van Fleet and Dylan Brooks are have higher, pro, like pro, bigger names than guys like maybe a Joe Harris or like a Monte Morris. Even though those guys are like you know veteran guys, they're more like role centric players where these guys can kind of come in for that starting lineup for the Rockets and do good. But I desperately think that next year they can kind of. I've been on the Pistons the last couple of years thinking, oh, this is the year they're going to nab it. This is the year they're going to nab it. I, mean, I think maybe next year with Ivy, Cade Cunningham, obviously Asor has been really, really solid on the defensive side if he can grow. And then they just get some other young pieces as well. I think they could be a nice team in the Eastern Conference for sure. Uh, yeah, I agree. They're not beating the Celtics, but they're no. going to be competitive. And as of right now, I mean, they're up by two. Exactly. It points matter. I mean, game, these types of games you can let go away with – you know, with a team like that, I feel like the record doesn't show how sneaky the Pistons can actually be, mm -hmm. how, despite the long losing streak they had early in the year. Yeah, exactly. Now that that losing streak definitely affected them a bunch because it, it turned a lot of people off on on their squad for sure. Yeah. Now, what I'm am happy is like the Celtics are playing cohesively. I mean, despite what the score is showing right now, I mean. Hopefully, they just gut out this game, and it's one of those games like, okay, we're getting close to April. It's getting close to playoff time. We want to stay healthy. Tillman, just do your job. Everyone just do their job for another couple weeks mm -hmm. and just stay healthy until playoff run. That's it. Exactly. I, I think that this squad as well, in April we have a couple of games where we can rest. I think our last couple of games are between Washington and Charlotte, I believe. And I know there's a, a Trailblazers game in the mix in April as well. So the Celtics could easily take a little bit of rest with some of these guys. Like they are kind of doing tonight, resting um, in their back-to-back -back with tomorrow going to Chicago, resting Horford, resting Tatum now. And I think we could see that in April and get to see some guys like Tillman, um, Brissett, Cornette, Pritchard, find more of a role and kind of we can see what they're going to be contributing for this playoff run that's interesting to see i'm all for it mm -hmm. I'm all for it i mean peyton pritchard's finally starting to show why he's worth that like he's worth the money that they signed him for mm -hmm. and i love guys like that on the bench is getting their dues credit and i i really think 
they they've been turned a corner since the All Star break, and yeah. It's just really showing what they got to do. And it's crazy that they, they turned a corner from the All-Star break when they already were doing so well already, you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy to see the improvements that this team can make with Jalen Brown just ex- ex- excelling so much after this uh, turnaround. Kristaps Porzingis, nice bucket right there as well. He's playing exceptional as well. Mm-hmm. Not at this moment with, as a team collectively, but he's playing exceptional as well. Mm-hmm. I really like him. He's he had that little bit of rest the last couple games, but he's been solid for this squad. Cade Cunningham with another bucket. Cade Cunningham and Jaden Ivey, two really good guards from Detroit. And Jaden Ivey had a big game versus us on Monday, even though the score won't really show it to you because the Celtics blew them out. He had, I believe, like fifteen or seventeen at the first half. It was pretty solid from him. Right, right. No, I, I agree. Uh, Jaden Ivey's always been a favorite player of mine. Um, I mean, I've also, and I'm a basketball sicko in some cases. I remember as a little kid, his mom was a bucket too. Mm-hmm. So he he has the makings of a good pro. I wish, um, I mean, obviously the Celtics can get him, but I wish there was other teams in the Eastern Conference that could definitely use the services. But maybe he was maybe that further down the future of his line if he's not the franchise point guard. Like when Drew starts to starts a little decline, I, he's someone I would trade for in his prime. Mm-hmm. We got a comment here from T Snizzle, one of our you know favorite and most passionate live stream watchers, saying, uh, "Until we play Denver, they scare me." Uh, Isaac, I've kind of mentioned how I feel about Denver in our last video, talking about how I think that uh, Denver has really like the best potential to match up against the Boston Celtics, and there's no really stop to Joker. You can kind of can kind of only contain him, kind of like how Giannis was a couple years back. Where in the MVP races, you can only just kind of contain him, can't really stop him. I don't know if there's like a true stopping. So the Celtics, I think, is going to run into that issue if they run into the Nuggets. But what is like your opinion on the Nuggets with the, compared to the Celtics? Uh, uh, my opinion, the Nuggets do scare. They, they, and I agree with you, so they do scare me. But if I'm, the West is so wide open. So I'm not, my priority wouldn't be even just looking at the Nuggets. I'd be scared of the eight seed, whoever is the eight seed in the West. I'd be scared of the West just in general because there there's a lot of talent depth. Yes, obviously all you can do is contain Jokic, but we got to see if Jokic can, if someone else decides to contain Jokic first. Uh, there's a lot of younger teams that could actually go up and down with the Nuggets that could give the Nuggets a little scare. That we, I mean, we might be see. I have a weird feeling we're going to see a version of the We Believe Warriors on another team where they're like, hey, they're seated low, they got nothing to lose, and they're just going to play the Nuggets and eliminate the Nuggets and. The Celtics don't have as one less thing to worry about, but Jokic is something that you have to contain. But I don't think, I don't, I don't think the Nuggets had the same defensive prowess as they did a year ago. Uh, losing Bruce Brown, uh, just timing. I mean, they still got Aaron Gordon and DeAndre Jordan. They're still pretty big defensively, but I, I just the defensive prowess from last year's team is not there. I think that Peyton Watson has, you know, made some strides for their bench. He definitely was a guy that surprised me. Where I thought that. Losing Bruce Brown was a key piece. Losing Jeff Green were key pieces for this for this Nuggets squad defensively, like you mentioned. And Peyton Watson, when they played the Boston Celtics, did pretty solid against us. So I don't know. Uh, he's a, he's a young guy. Maybe in the playoffs, he's not going to be able to step up as much as the regular season. Obviously, it's a different type of game. But like you said, the Nuggets definitely have to come out of the West because there are a lot of other teams like the Clippers. There's teams like the Suns who Celtics have you know beaten down recently the last couple of weeks, but they could go on a, in a nice run in the Western Conference and easily take over. A team like the Pelicans as well is a very scary team, I think, too. I, I couldn't agree more, man. It's just, I, I know uh, our fans are saying, oh, we got to worry about Denver. I would not worry about Denver. <laughs> I would worry about the Knicks and the Heat. <laughs> I would worry about the Knicks and the Heat. That's your priority. Um, make sure the Knicks do not get completely healthy and I know I have some, Bruce knows me personally on a personal level. I got some different connections with the Knicks. So like, it's weird for me. Um, I just know the Knicks after watching the Knicks in person and watching just the Celtics, the last couple, the last couple few games, I'm like, yeah, I I do not want the Knicks to be healthy if I'm the Celtics. No, I know what you mean. That's, that's the one team that I'm very scared of. If I'm a Boston Celtics fan, fully healthy wise, I know that the Milwaukee Bucks just gave us a little bit of a run for our money and on their last game. So, you know what I mean? Without Giannis. So I think they're going to be a good team that can bring us to a deep series, but the Knicks, I feel like are a team that could also stop the Bucks if they run into them first before we get into them. And I think that's a, very high possibility with like the standings and stuff 
Right. And, and that's the thing. I think right now Boston just needs to, uh, you know, figure out their identity right now. Like, hey, we're offensive juggernaut or a defensive juggernaut. Like the Knicks in their division figured out, oh, we're we're the guys with, that are going to be 40 minutes of hell. Mm-hmm. They finally figured out we're looking at a Thibodeau team that is looking like the 08, 09 Bulls, like in a weird comparison without the offensive prowess of Derrick Rose. We're looking at that grit that defensive um, grip that they have. Celtics, we need the 08 Celtics. <laughs> yeah. We we'll just match that play. So if the I, – I believe in Joe, Joe's made for this type of year, this time of time year. Um, he's a legend himself in this March Madness years uh, himself, uh, being, at West, being at West Virginia. So he's not afraid of the moment. So I know uh, he's going to get these guys ready. Exactly. I think that his mindset also is very great. I love how he's – like work this nice culture with this team that he's had like the reins not just getting thrown in last year you know what i mean he's had like that full time to get his assistant coaches ready get everything get his game plan set for the celtics yeah no and i i completely agree to that it's gonna be interesting to watch i think joe now um joe joe's got a good joe's got the roster he needs to 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 make a deep 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 run exactly comes from his coaching tree wise he comes from i mean he coached under jerry calhoun in the college level and he was a strong d2 coach and his defensive teams his d2 teams were all all defense all americans and offense all americans juggernauts and so him coming to the celtics trying to add that flavor to that and also whatever he learned from Ime and and brad um i i think it's gonna be a good combination so far I, unfortunately it's not showing in this first quarter mm-hmm. it was because they are just What's going on? I think guys are tired, maybe, but um, sheesh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think definitely that could be an issue. Um, I also think that just, I don't know. It's not looking great right now with this this squad on the TV. Everyone's kind of chatting. So we got a chat here from Ron asking how we are doing. How you doing, Isaac? Let's, let's. Uh, been busy, man. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Been busy. I've had to take a hiatus from the channel due to uh just some personal stuff going on uh moving new house new places and uh just trying to get settled <laughs> just trying to get settled and still a lot of other stuff a lot of transitions are happening so i had to take a a strong three-week break from the channel oh yeah we've been grinding here we've been doing our stuff as sam hauser makes a nice layup for the celtics he's been a big key piece for this team this year in my personal opinion a guy who i'm not gonna lie at the beginning of the year i wasn't that really high on after his you know preseason but he's really started to turn up for the boston celtics and i really am happy how he's looked and a lot of people i think are sleeping on him you think so why why do you think so because i've watched sam in college i've always known sam was he was a pro so So, uh, there's just a lot of people and it could just be, you know, people that don't really watch the games, people that aren't, like, attached. But I feel like a lot of Celtics fans, um, they they go off name value, some of them. So some of them will want a specific player just because, like, oh, this guy's had a great legacy. Oh, he's playoff ready, known off of that, compared to, like, believing in some of our younger players and wanting those younger players to shine. I feel like a guy like Sam Hauser, or Luke Cornett, since they don't have those flashier names for, like, a contending team, some of these fans are kind of not really liking them. Also, people have also really hated on Sam's defense, and I don't understand where that's come from because he's fantastic at defending at the rim on the weak side, helping out defenders, and you know, just overall just staying in front of his man. Perimeter defense has been pretty solid as well, and if you look at the advanced t- statistics as well, you can clearly see it. So it's just, I don't know. Some people might be a little bit trolly, but I just see people not really liking him, even in the comments as well. I mean, I mean, I can see it. Sam, um, you guys think about it. Sam played at Marquette, and he also played at UVA. The style of defense he's his last couple of years in his college career, transitioning to a pro, was the pack line defense of Tony Bennett. It's it, it's a slow, it's a slow defense that's supposed to just pack in the paint, just uh, principle wise. So if you're doing that for about almost a year and a half and trying to transition to the league, it doesn't always translate immediately. Sam has always been a great athlete, good offensive juggernaut. He's a little slower defensively, but he can get to his man and cover his man if, you know, if he works on that timing. So I, I, I'm not going to sh- I understand the hate for it because he's not a flashy name, but you need guys that I feel like every championship team has to have guys that don't have a flashy name that can just do their job and get the job done. So I, I felt like the Celtics team is showing that. 
unlike the 08 team, with the exception of the 08 Celtics team that won a title, a lot of those guys were all flashy names. I mean, but they also had they also played a significant role. Rajon Rondo, Eddie House, uh, Brandon, uh, not Brandon Bass, um, <laughs> Tony Allen. They all were gritty guys that just knew their role, knew what they had to do for the five to ten minutes they got in the game off the bench, or you know they played their role. So I, I think the Celtics fans shouldn't just worry about the name. Mm -hmm. As he does his role right, he's good to go. Exactly, and that's a big thing that I've been kind of hyping up, that this team has, you know, so many guys compared to last year's and in the past that um, haven't really stuck to their role. Guys kind of wanted to be a little bit individualized, maybe going out for more points. But in rec this year especially, I've seen – plethora of guys from top to bottom, you know, have that specific role. Sam being that 3 and D wing, Cornette being, you know, a little bit of a defensive stopper, Xavier Tillman being another guy that can be a defensive stopper, Shea Brissett being just a high-energy guy who, you know, is always going to go balls to the wall to the to the rebounds and stuff like that. He's in right now, which I think is absolutely fantastic, him getting some minutes because he's one of the guys at the bottom of the rotation that I think should deserve some more minutes. Mm -hmm. No, I, I mean, the Celtics, I said this earlier, and I know some of our Faithful fans, I, I listened to your comment. I screwed up on their G League video, and I'm going to get it and hopefully get a second shot at it. <laughs> Celtics have a great bench, and they also have a great collection of people that they're not even using right now that they could call up. Mm -hmm. um, they got scores, defenders, 3 and D guys that, that are out of plethora of them, just as like on deck, ready to go. They don't have to use them, luckily, unlike some other teams, like, oh, no, we need to use whatever. We need to use everybody. Uh, the 15 and the G League, be ready to be called up at any moment. And the 15 here, be ready to be replaced at any moment. So the Celtics are in a good spot right now. I think they have a great bench, and uh, they can't wait to see what they use later in the postseason exactly. when, when the play starts. Exactly. Same here. We got, we got a comment here from Ron who wants some play-by-play. -play. So let's get some play-by-play -play going for the game here for Ron as he enjoys it as we get to see some Cade Cunningham dribbling to the rack over here. Pistons have had some injuries as well. They had a guy, Stanley Am Amude, I believe. I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that right. He played in the game on Monday, but now he's out. So they have, like, another guy in the starting lineup who I honestly don't really know. Pistons, though, another basket there. I think that oh, Jared Roden. No way. Seton Hall legend. <laughs> Jared Roden. Jared Roden, Seton Hall legend. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. No, I mean... um, the Celtic this Cornette with a big rebound right there, fighting over Chemez Metu. Got a rebound. Got mm -hmm. a rebound. Cornette, keep doing what you're doing, buddy. That's what he does. That's what he does best, in my opinion. Is he's a guy who's always in the right position at the right time for the Boston Celtics. And even if he can't get that rebound, he does those little tips and stuff like that, which allows the Celtics to be able to get some of those. Uh, Extra hustle plays, extra rebounds. We got 11 viewers in here. So if you guys are new to the stream, 114 views in total, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you guys are here to the stream, if you guys are watching, make sure to hit that like button. We're going to get a little bit of a like spike going on here as we try to get as many people that want to watch the game and enjoy the game with us alongside of us here. Yeah, Evan Fournier, another Celtic, uh, past Celtic, a guy who's on the Knicks was able to kill the Boston Celtics multiple multiple times on the offensive side. Good to see him do that. May possibly tonight for the Pistons, but hopefully not. Another good rebound. But Luke, good rebound. Mm hmm He's just he's just in the right spot at the right time always. It seems. Hey, that's that's taught. That's taught. Mm-hmm. And that's why, and that's why I feel like the the Celtics team really has wanted him and appreciated him. You know what I mean? Is that he's been a guy who has always been seen above Namus Cato and Namus Cato before, and I thought maybe it was just locker room stuff or just because he's a good guy, but because his play wasn't doing that great compared to Namus. But it's truly that he has the intangibles and they truly trust him. And Joe Joe does believe in him, and I'm glad that he does that. As Peyton Pritchard, that was a fantastic layup that he just had right there. His ability to drive to the rack is just fantastic. And we st started to see it the last couple weeks where he's really started to attack those mismatches. And adding that to his game is just something huge. That's a lot of film. And Peyton Pritchard's finally sh started to show. Mm -hmm. um, he's starting to finally show that uh, that what he can do. Exactly. He's, he's a guy that you know most people regard as just like a catch-and-shoot guy, a guy maybe who can create his own shot. But 
He's been really, really solid at multiple sides of the ball. And even though he's not the greatest defender, the hustle and energy he gives for offensive rebounds and stuff like that is absolutely amazing. That's all you can ask for. Mm-hmm. But yeah, got a tie game currently. Pritchard for three here. Misses. Ah, oh, the bad foul. <laughs> bad foul. Yep, yep. Luckily, it, no one's in foul trouble, but man, you still don't want that. You still want, you don't want that potential. Exactly. We got 12 people in the stream though. 13 people, nine likes. Thanks to everyone that's you know tuned in. Hit that like button. Everyone that's been chatting away with us, we appreciate you guys spending your Friday night watching the Hospital Celtics. Basically, I mean, there's some starters, but a little bit of a little bit of some guys. We got Pritchard, Tillman starting as they make another three. Celtics two for seven from three point range. Not not. It could be better. Mm -hmm. Better percentage should be higher, but you know I think in in this situation it should be shoot or shoot. Yeah, shoot or shoot situation. And we've seen them come out of games where they've had bad first halves through point range, and they've been able to shoot out of it. So it just the, don't let it take it away with things. Yeah, the made. yeah, uh, yeah. Troy Brown Jr. They're on a 9-0 run in the last minute. Shaper set. Oh! Okay, he got fouled. When he did that little pump fake, I was like, he's made one three for the Celtics this season. I was like, please, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, at least he makes it pretty mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, though. That type of energy, I think. The Celtics are in a little bit of a slump. If he's on the bench, if you're Joe, you throw him in there. Go, go get a hustle rebound or two. Like bring the guys back to life. And if he can do that, I think that's you know maybe a little bit of a wake up call to some of the other guys too that are on the floor. Like, hey, we need to win this. Hey, this guy, guy who's just an energy guy or a guy at the end of a bench is coming in hot. We need to do it as well. Right. Couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. Couldn't agree more. Oh, he misses the second free throw. That's it's brutal. That's been a problem for the Celtics this whole year, though, is consistency of making free throws. And it's something that they need to work on, I think, for the playoffs because we're going to get into moments where teams might be fouling us more. We might be getting a little bit more calls at the end one or something like that. And we need to be able to hit those as their free points. Couldn't agree more. And there's an old saying, free throws win ball games. Mm-hmm. So they just yeah. Yeah, there's there've been stretches through the season where they've they've been successful at them, but in just in recent seeing not not so much. Pritchard for three, that's that's big that's a big three to to end the quarter right there. Keep the momentum swing the momentum a little bit. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on Peyton Pritchard this year as we get to commercial break as the Celtics are down at the current moment, uh thirty four to thirty two down two points. I think he's a great sparker off the bench. I know some people have complained that they might have overpaid him. Uh, uh, if he shows, keeps playing, like he keeps having the games that he's having right now, he's right at his perfect value. Um, I know there's some GM guys want like to play fantasy GM, but hey, they if this is what the market says they're worth, this is what they're worth. He's playing like what he's worth right now. And he is somebody that if he keeps playing this way, like the positive side of this, like being an offensive spark, someone that you can plug into the starting lineup offensively if someone goes down, um, by all means, he's playing excellent, especially this week. He, he's really showing that, hey, he's putting where his money where his mouth is. Exactly. He kind of started off this, it was when he got that first start versus Portland is where he really started to take off. He almost had that triple-double in his first start this year back at his hometown. And he's been known to obviously go off in Portland and over by Oregon in that area. He's done it multiple times, done it in proams and stuff like that. But the consistency of it as well is fantastic. And him, a lot of people's gripe is that he hasn't been able to find his shot, find his rhythm with his shooting this year. I think they expect him to average, you know, 12 to 15 points off the bench. But that's not something that you know, he's going to do consistently, but he can do it in spurts. But if he's not doing that, he's being a fantastic playmaker as well, which I think a lot of people don't really see when they look at the stats sheets or that they're just looking at the box scores and they don't watch the games. Right. Right. I couldn't agree more. 
I, I mean, Peyton's playing well. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of his. Uh, but with him, I just he's got to stay consistent. That's his biggest thing right now. Can he keep this play going into the playoffs? Mm-hmm. And I think in April, with him being able to get a couple games more under his belt, and right now as well, with him getting a couple starting nods, I think that's going to you know work his and ramp him up a little bit more to be more prepared with a, a bigger workload going deeper and deeper into the playoffs. Because once we get to, if we get to the finals or the Eastern Conference finals, it's not like we're going to be running nine or ten man rotations. So he's going to be right. having to take a little bit more of a workload for that as well, too. Right. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. T. Snizzle agrees as well. He thinks that Peyton Pritchard is a great shooter. Is there any changes that you would like to see the Celtics run out here after the end of the first quarter? Obviously, we're down two points. Um, any like little adjustments that you would like to see? Um, <laughs> rebounds. Yeah, <laughs> like that's just they're getting out rebounded right now. That's really about it. Like they're going tit for tat and mm-hmm. just a little. Russell and just don't get that rebounded right now. Box out the weak side. I mean, obviously in high school they teach you, you know, look out the opposite side. These are NBA, these are pro shooters. These guys aren't going to overshoot. Open force the Pistons to overshoot. They're all younger. They're all younger guys. You guys are older. Force them to overshoot. Exactly. I agree. And I think getting those rebounds is a big it's a big thing as well. Derek White with a big rebound there off that off the first missed shot from the Pistons. But Peyton Pritchard again just. Even though on that play right there, even though he doesn't go for that layup, the attention he's drawing from going for that drive to be able to kick it up to Sam Hauser is so valuable. And that adds to like his like stressability where you have to worry about it. It's not like you know that he's going to automatically pass out. Right. Got to limit those. Yep. Jared Roden again. I don't know why. Good job, Sam. <laughs> mm-hmm. Three. Yeah. There we go. It is it's just going back and forth. I'll take the back and forth offense. I'll yep. take Troy Brown Jr. T. Snizzle wants us to get more stops. I think that's definitely deserving as well. A little bit more effort on the defensive side. But the Pistons are just making a bunch of buckets. Yeah, no, and, and it's weird because, you know, these guys uh, offensively, like, you know, sometimes you can get into a slump. Sometimes you're just hot. And I think the Pistons are just slightly a little hot today. Mm-hmm. However, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't get hot either. Exactly. Marcus Sasser is also a player who, in the last two games for the for the Pistons, has done decent. He was a pick that the Celtics took and traded back for. Sam, big three. Big three. Th- see, yeah. Big threes by Sam. Good, good big three. And that's that's the thing that they that they missed as well in that Bucks game was not having Sam Hauser. There were a lot, and no Drew Holiday. There weren't a lot of. I wouldn't say corner shooters, but like those two guys are our main two guys from shooting in the corners. Fee had one three in his five minutes that he played. He's in here. That's why I mentioned in that. But having Sam Hauser back definitely spaces out the floor and allows the Celtics to be able to run more of their offense. T. Snizzle says he loves Sam Hauser more than he loves Popeyes. Uh, that's a. <laughs> Put it. That's a very interesting way to put it, I mm-hmm. guess, in that regard. Sam Hauser. Miss. Derek, Derek White with the long rebound. Derek White. He was a guy that a lot of people thought were going to have a big game tonight for the Boston Celtics just because he's um, one of the main starters that are that is playing tonight with obviously having Tatum out, with having uh, Horford and Holiday. He's been really, really solid, and I think he's one of the main key pieces to the Celtics' success as well. Yeah, he has been. He has been. It's one of the bigger pieces as well when it comes Ooh. to that. That was a little – you see that play with Sam Hauser trying to go for that layup. That was a little weird. A little miscommunication there. Wiseman getting another basket. Why? No Jalen Duran tonight? I didn't realize that. 
Yeah, no Jalen Durant tonight. It's it's weird. I don't know. I mean, I, is he just? I know that they rested uh, Isaiah Stewart and they rested uh, Asor for the rest of the year, but Derek White getting a good cut to the basket, almost getting the and one, but the ability to do that and even get that finish off is amazing. Mm-hmm. Derek White, though, really a key key difference maker. I couldn't agree more. There we go. Make it on the three. You got to make free throws, guys. Mm-hmm. Good substitution right there, getting KP and then Luke Cornett going back in. And yep. O'Shea. Yeah, just get guys fresh legs. That's yep. the best to go about just it. Keep, just keep switching it out. I think, that's the, I think that's the way to succeed. That's the way to do it. Couldn't agree more. I mean, obviously, you can't platoon offensive with five in, five out, like in uh, make a way to make the second free throw, Derek, Derek White, and then um, you know, you can't platoon offense in the NBA, like really. I mean, you can, but it's not really, it's not really needed. These guys mm-hmm. are built enough to just play. So, pretty sure you have the ex- that same exact sh- like shooting sh- warm up shirt that Cornette was having on. <laughs> uh, Jaden Ivey with a tough bucket. God damn! Like I said in the last game, he was he was really really solid for them on the offensive side, and he's a guy who didn't even start at the start of the year. Very 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 weird situation there, but another young ex- explosive high energy creator that's really talented on offense. I was hoping that the Pacers were able to snag him. I thought that they possibly were going to be able to trade up for him. Obviously, went to Purdue. I thought that would have been a, a cool story. Right. No, I agree. I agree. Couldn't agree more. Derek White, though, with another layup. Oh, O'Shea. Oops. Almost gets gets the rebound there. But, again, just having that energy, being able to you know, give that effort is at least willing and nice to see. No, I agree. I agree. Good defense, though. The Celtics are playing a little bit hard, a little bit hard nose more, but slowing down a little bit more, trying to focus up on that side of the ball. Maybe they're getting in the Pistons' heads a little bit. I wouldn't say getting in the heads. It's just more about, like, okay, got to turn up the heat a little bit. Got to turn mm-hmm. up the heat in the kitchen a little bit. Try to, got to make some, got to make them uncomfortable at home. Exactly. Because we've already seen this story where the Celtics were down to the Pistons at halftime at in the TD right. Garden, and luckily they came out with an overtime victory. But even with the starters out, you can't be losing a game to the Pistons. Right. Svi gets the goaltend there, and the foul it looks like, or. Did he, he looked like he was walking, yeah. Good rebound. Yeah. Going oh, back and forth in these shots. Good rebound. KP, Christoph for being it's a big rebound. Yep. Now for the second, this game is slightly low scoring, but also mm-hmm. given the offensive prowers that are in this game, very low scoring a little bit. I thought it'd be just a little bit higher, but it's okay. Good shot, Derek White, trying to take over that lead, for, get a four-point lead in there. Yep. We need that from him. Like I mentioned, he's he had a little bit of a hot hand the last couple games. Uh, versus the Bucks, he he did solid as well. But versus the Wizards and the uh, versus the Pistons last game, he was really really great. Nice bucket, yep. Nice bucket. Now you have a four point lead. Got it. Now you got to put the gas on the pedal now. Yep. Press the gas now. Mm-hmm. Take the all, all time out. Yep. Got to push the got to push the buttons now. This is this is the opportunity to strike if you're the Boston Celtics. This is the opportunity for everybody else to strike as well as we have 12 people that are in here. Celtics are playing to decent amounts, so hit that like button if you guys are enjoying. Got a little bit of fire for the Boston Celtics or some of our some of our guys, but could be seeing a better performance. 
I like that. I like that. And I mean, it's the NBA. You never know. These these guys are all pros. Mm-hmm. It's not always going to be a blowout. It's not always an easy win. It's a hard. It's a. It's these guys are the best players in the world. Exactly. And I, and what I've expressed as well as multiple multiple times is that the Celtics aren't robots. They're not perfect players. Yes, we have the best team. Yes, we have you know arguably the best starting five hands down, one of the best you know rosters in the NBA. But every single night they're not going to come out perfect and win every single game by 20, 25, 30 points. There are going to be some nights where they have bad shooting nights or other teams just play their game plan and the Celtics have to adjust and it just doesn't work. Right, right. I couldn't agree more. I could not agree more. T. Snizzle says he bet $213 against the Pistons. He's going to be rich. You better be hoping so. My question to you is, is I've seen some, now that we're at a commercial break here, what are your thoughts on the whole sports betting and NBA thing? Because there had been the new... And that, that's where I'm going to, but the the new company is League Pass with sports betting where they're going to provide the updates. I know JB Bickerstaff had a lot to say about it, and I kind of agreed on what he had to say, talking about just how it's gotten a little bit ridiculous and out of hand with it. Um, In, in the shortest terms, sports betting is, is going to ruin sports, but it's also going to give a lot of opportunities for people to make money. So I'm not against that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about, oh, just like basic money on bets. I'm just talking about just, um, you know, it gives a, it gives more relay to add more revenue. And sports betting does add more revenue to the CBA, so I get it, making it live for bets. But I, it's going to cause a gambling epidemic. Oh, no. I'm so sorry about that. I'm... What is... I can dude. I'm so sorry about that. I don't know. It just kicked Isaac out. We're gonna switch over to this one real quick as it kicks Isaac out here. I'm gonna get Isaac back in here and we're gonna have this going. I'm going to call Isaac on Teams and get him in here. And then if we get him in here, then he should be good to go. Let's see. Because we want to get Isaac back in here. We want to have, you know, the fun chats that we were having talking about this stuff. As the Celtics play some good defense, I'll do some commentary while I try to get this back in. Kate Cunningham for three. Miss. Isaac Harris is currently unavailable. Um, that came through. Out the, that probably came out into the, the, the stream. That's, that's kind of funny. Not going to lie. Um, Jalen Brown with a nice basket there. 12 points for Jalen Brown, 6 for 7 from the field, and another efficient first half for a guy who, without Jason Tatum, has really had to step up, and it and is for the Celtics. A uh, good rebound by Derek White. Very good rebound by Derek White. Great pass to Porzingis. Porzingis! Misses the layup. Let me see if I can do this. Let me. It's video. I want to do video. Get this going. Kristaps is gets the foul, or is complaining about a foul. Jay Nivey, two for five from the field tonight. Five points, two rebounds. Solid game. Solid, 
solid game because we got a timeout here. A lot of confusion with the Celtics and the Pistons. Celtics up Isaac seven Harris points. Isaac is currently unavailable. Okay. So, the zoom. Let me see if I can do another zoom. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom. Got to wait six minutes to do a zoom, zoom. Uh, this is so dumb. Uh, eight. Now we'll do seven thirty to ten eleven. Your Zoom One Basic has a forty minute time unit on meetings. Awesome. That's why I he got kicked out. Um. Would be honest, things could be different, but against blank ass teams, free money, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. It is free money if the Celtics, you know, come out on, um, come out victorious. I just wanted to, you know, have that little conversation. Unfortunately, it did get cut off there because of, you know, the the Zoom meeting, you know, not working, uh, booting us out. Unfortunately, again, I am sorry. Trying to do these streams. This is, you know, the first kind of streams that I have been doing. I've only started this as my third, you know, watch along live stream. So again, I apologize if you guys are here. Thank you to the 12 people that have been watching. We do appreciate. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We're going to try to get Isaac back up here, but as we try to get Isaac back up here, obviously the Celtics are you know doing solid, you know, bouncing back a little bit in the second quarter here. Let me let me do this. Get Isaac here. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Hello? Yep. Hello. All right. All right. Here you are. Sorry about that again. I... No, you're fine. I completely forgot that, you know, Zoom is. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't really realize that that was going to happen. So as we get back, I'm going to set all this up again. Get you all set up. So do that. Give me a second. you in here again again sorry to everybody for the technical difficulties here but we're gonna have Isaac back up here we'll be good to go don't know why you gallery okay and then in fit to frame Celtics playing some pretty solid defense here in, in the second quarter and able to, you know, take a little bit of a lead, which is which is good for this squad tonight. Because mm -hmm. started off a little bit not in the greatest senses here. Right. Cade Cunningham for three. He takes it and misses.
chat back up. We got the live stream up. We got 16 people. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for sticking through again. Sorry for the whole trying to trying to figure this out. Um, let me just share the screen so you can see. And then Christophs Porzingis is on the ground. Does that make it any better? Maybe. Nope. I don't understand why the uh, the Zoom call has to be like that. I'm gonna have to. No, you gotta pay for it. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm gonna have to to upgrade that so that we can have that fixed. Full frame. Maybe. Mhm. Mm okay. Then as I. Go to fix that. Jalen Brown with another tough basket. Jalen Brown's been on fire this second quarter for the Boston Celtics. Been a true, you know, big piece for the Celtics success. He has. I'm like I said, he's showing what he's worth. He's showing that he's worth that money. That's what you could ask for. Exactly. And a lot of fans I felt like didn't think he was worth that money, which I thought was a little ridiculous. No, you haven't had a drafted homegrown star in forever. Um no, take it take it no I, pay him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Him. exactly. You can afford that. Pay him. A lot of people don't understand seem to see understand that either. They just think like, oh, the Celtics are not going to be able to afford all these guys, but we're going to be able to afford it with the CBA increasing and finding young steals and gems like Tillman, like Springer. Guys like that are going to become more, not more attainable, but what people are going to be actually looking for. Right. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. I'm trying to, trying to, trying to see if I can get this to work. Fortunately, more options. Show gallery at the top, maybe. I don't know why it's not like fitting with the teams. So, I mean, I can call you. I can try to call you back on Zoom, or you can call me on Zoom and see if that works. And I can see if I can fit that in because I might have um the limit be done. Okay, let's see. I can uh, might have to do it separately. So let me uh, get off Teams here real quick. Okay. Another call. Okay. And I'll try to send you something. Okay. Alrighty. Sorry about that again, guys. I really do apologize for not being able to have everything set up and ready to go again. Some technical difficulties here, but yeah, Shea Brissett bringing a lot of energy. Celtics on a 19 to five run in the second quarter. Like Isaac and I mentioned, that Derek White tough bucket when we had a five-point lead was a big run that we needed to go on, and that's what the Celtics started right here. Porzingis playing fantastic defense, giving it to Brissett, who gives it to White. White with the layup gets fouled, but misses the shot. Again, I'm sorry, guys. T. Snizzles, you know, giving us all the comments down below. Yeah, Jalen, show off that left hand exactly. Like I mentioned, this is the first of three streams that we've done. I'm trying to get everything, you know, safe and sound and ready to go for the playoffs. That's why we've been testing these streams out the last couple of nights. So, I, again, appreciate everybody that's tuned in. To the 10 people that are watching the stream right now, again, we do greatly appreciate you. To, you know, the 10 people that are watching, again, I appreciate it. To the 222 people that have actually tuned in tune on to our stream click that video just to even watch it i appreciate you and to the 13 people that have hit that like button already on the stream again thank you guys so much for showing your guys support here 
We'll have another watch along stream for you guys tomorrow night versus the Bulls as well. So it should be, you know, another exciting one. Hopefully, if Isaac joins us for that one, we can have that all set up and fixed as well. As this fan is crying that the Pistons are losing, maybe. Big defense again from the Celtics. Perfect ball movement for a Peyton Pritchard three. It's rain and threes, baby. But yeah. Let me see if I can. Yep, here we go. We're going to be joining Isaac right back up again. But yeah, the Celtics have been playing, you know, a solid game so far in the second quarter. Really coming back to life after a little bit of a first quarter close action game. Threes are going boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we're getting that rating threes emote drop in. We're going to have that thing soon. We're definitely going to let Ben know about that so we can have that for here because. Celtics are catching fire tonight. Peyton Pritchard is hot again from three. Sam Hauser misses the three, but again, Shaper set Peyton Pritchard. Pritchard trying to find Hauser always open on that three point corner, being that fantastic playmaker. You have him and both Shaper set fighting for those rebounds. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, awesome. If you give me host, I, I can share for you if you want, and then... Sure, yeah, I can definitely do that. Give me one second. I got you. And I can bring you back over here, too. Awesome. Perfect. So, share. Screen. Share. Boom. And I'll bring you back over here. I muted you by accident. There we go. Sorry. All good. Like, there we go. Yes, we have Isaac back. We are back. We are ready to continue this breakdown. Like we mentioned, I was just saying it while you were gone. Celtics. They need to come out of that timeout huge. They had that five-point lead, and they extended that lead into that second quarter. They went on that huge run to end the quarter. Peyton Pritchard hit some big-time shots. Kristaps Porzingis is playing some fantastic defense. O'Shea Brissett really bringing out that energy with this squad tonight. You know, and I, I, that's all you could ask for is just guys just coming out ready to play and just doing what they got to do. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I, I pray they can just pull away right now, and that's all you can ask for. Exactly. As we enter the halftime, you know, we have a 16-point lead, which is a big-time lead for the Boston Celtics. Obviously, a lead that you would be expecting to see versus a Pistons squad, but one that, you know, you feel comfortable right now with this moment with the Celtics. Yeah, I, I, feel, I would feel comfortable, but, I, I mean, I'm not satisfied. Exactly. <laughs> They had to earn that 16. <laughs> they had to earn that 16 points. They had to earn that 16-point lead. The, Celt the Pestons are making them earn it, and that's okay. Maybe they need a little wake-up call for this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is a, you know, a game that most fans, I thought, including myself, felt confident going into, thought that they were going to come out victorious. So something that we want to see, but maybe we'll get to see some more fun in the, in the second quarter. Or the second half, excuse me. I'm gonna look at the the box score here. See if there's see if there's anything that, that jumps out to me for this game. 
Eddie House is wearing his Lobos stuff for his son. Unfortunately, they were unable to get the upset versus Clemson. Did you uh, have them in the March Madness bracket or something like that? I, I had, I have like 10 brackets. Okay. Or, so one of the brackets I think I do, but one of the other ones I do not. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, the Mountain West, uh, they, they had a good year. New, New Mexico had a great year this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think they were just – they weren't going to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah, no. unfortunately for them, they they weren't up, unable to get the win. But for the Celtics here, let's look at the box scores here. Porzingis, 8 points, 2 for 6 from the field. 10 points from White, 16 from Pritchard, and 16 from Brown. Brown really started to take a leap in that second quarter. And again, Pete and Pritchard, another fantastic night. 6 for 9 from the field, 4 for 6 from 3 with 7 total assists. Something that a lot of people undermine and definitely look past when they look at his game for the pistons james wiseman has 18 points kate cunningham 11 those two have kind of you know have been able to go off oh turn that ad off in my ear but besides that um jared rodents had five points sasser some guys who have been able to do a little bit if we look at the team stats overall Celtics shooting better than the Pistons, even though they were both shooting around 57% at the end of the first quarter. The Pistons have dropped off around 10%, shooting around 46 shooting 26% from three. Celtics shooting worse from free throw compared to the Pistons, though, shooting around 67%, which is something that they do expect to see. Still getting out-rebounded, but they have made the margins a little bit closer, 23-19. to 19. Six offensive rebounds to their four, so they have, they're out-rebounding us by two in that regard. Celtics more assists, Celtics five more steals, two more blocks. So the stock exchange, one member, Derek White, getting some, you know, meaningful stuff and O'Shea Brissett stepping up in that role a little bit too. And the Celtics, shockingly as well, which is a big time thing, only a total of three turnovers compared to the Pistons, eight, which is a big thing because the Celtics tend to turn the ball, turn, tend to turn the ball over a little bit excessively. Right. No, I, I mean... Yeah, yeah. I, I, they need to limit the turnovers. I mean, because they they're so offensively sound, and, and um, I couldn't agree more. But got to limit the turnovers. You just got to play tight, good defense for this last half of this game for the second half. Mm-hmm. Now the turnovers and the free throw percentage are definitely the two glaring issues that I have with this team. The offensive rebounding as well can be a, a definitely an issue in some aspects where some they it's you don't really expect it, but it's just something where they've struggled with second chance points or and limiting other teams' second chance points as well, which is something they'll have to work on. But that's just like me getting a little nitpicky here and there, you know what I mean? And with this squad, you kind of have to be nitpicky to to find something wrong with the team. Right. Good to agree more, yeah. It, 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 I mean, you want to nitpick. I mean, I, you want to nitpick all the little things now because this team is so good because they're not perfect. There's those weaknesses that the other teams can watch these films and stuff and look at mm-hmm. like, hey, we see these weaknesses with the Celtics. They're bad at the free throw line, so foul them, foul them, foul them and until and you want to foul their worst free throw shooter. So teams are going to look at that through the film, and it's definitely going to hurt down in the playoffs if they don't try to nip that in the butt or try to contain that themselves. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Let me look. I'm going to be looking at some March Madness. Let's see. I haven't been able to. Any big upsets happened today? I haven't been able to to watch uh, Yale, anything. Yale beat Auburn. Yeah. No, no. Oh. Yeah. That's that's not that good. That's not good for my like my actual bracket. And Florida lost as well. Derek White's Colorado uh, Buffaloes and my bracket because I picked them to go to the Elite Eight in one of my brackets. And Peyton Pritchard's Oregon Ducks both finding out big time W's. Yeah, I can see Yale won 78-76 to to the SEC champs. Auburn, Bruce Pearl. Unfortunate. Yeah, no. I actually, not real. I'm checking all my 10 brackets. One of the brackets I had Yale beating Auburn. So I'm like, I'm safe in one bracket. But because I had Yale beating Auburn, but I didn't have Duquesne winning against BYU in the other bracket, I'm like, ah. But I had Duquesne in my other brackets winning. I uh, support my A10 schools. Mm-hmm. But, I had I had Duquesne winning as well. I I thought that 
I wasn't really bought into the BYU hype. I didn't really watch that much college basketball this year, but I was I was definitely riding with Duquesne. I thought it was gonna it would be a cool story, and and it definitely was. Duquesne was picked like initially to be at the top of the A10. They just had a horrible year, did injuries, and just wasn't finding a good flow. And they just cleaned it up in the conference tournament. Mm-hmm. For they won, and so. Um, Hey, and I figured, I'm like, well, Keith Damber already announced that he's going to retire their head coach. Doesn't surprise me if they're just going to go out of what I see them going to the Sweet 16. Mm-hmm. I, I can, who is their who is their next matchup? Uh, Duquesne's next matchup, if I'm not mistaken, is Washington State. Okay. Okay. It might be. It's between the winner of Washington State and Iowa State. Okay. And if they get Iowa State, I'm not sure. <laughs> they... <But laughs> Yes, like I think they, I think they got to run. I think they can get a run. If they get Washington State, by all means, they, they, they can get to the uh, they. I mean, oh, sorry, Duquesne's next ma- matchup, if if I'm not mistaken, is Illinois on Saturday. Sorry, okay, Illinois. okay, that a tough one. That's yes, be- uh, Illinois, yeah. the the Big Ten champs. Yes, yes. Illinois is gonna be tough, but I think they might be able to squeak it up. We'll have to I'm wait. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. That's the fun about the madness of March. You know what I mean? There's there's so many great underdog stories. We saw last year as well with uh, FDU and FAU, both, you know. F- 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 FAU is not an underdog story, in my opinion. No. I mean, 8-9 seed, I think, is is, is pretty cool to, to make it that far and, and to go that, like, from a smaller school. Like, a school that wasn't really heard of for basketball, I think, was. I know that they had a good record, but. They're good at football school, and when I look at FAU, I'm like, the way they won their games last year, they went almost pretty much undefeated. They only had two losses in the whole regular season, and based off who they play, I'm like, they were going to the Final Four. Like, they, they reminded me of Wichita State. Okay. Like, like, of which, like mm-hmm. the way they, well, I'm like, they reminded me of the Wichita State with Fred Van Fleet was on. Like, that Wichita State team. Mm-hmm. They luckily didn't have to go against Kentucky in the second round. Yeah. <laughs> It's an FDU, which is like, okay, we play these teams in our conference all the time. Easy win. Mm-hmm. So, no, like FAU, FAU's year last year was not of a Cinderella. It was like, it's, it was expected just okay. by the way they play. I saw it. Now, FDU, Cinderella, or no, oh, by all means, yes. But FAU, no, 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 no. Heck no. <laughs> even St. Saint, even Saint Peter's the year before it was a, a very cool, very cool story to see as well. I know that. I'm a little biased with Shaheen because he went to Seton after, but I'm not biased about it. Shaheen's one of the best players to ever come out of Seton Hall. I'm biased about it because I'm a Ryder fan and I oh yeah, Peters. Yeah, Ryder. screw the Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Peacock. I'm not a Peacocks fan. I'm just not. It's just I'm a Ryder. I mean, it was great for the conference because the conference got so much money. But yeah, I'm as a Ryder fan. I rock the cranberry. I, you will never catch me in that navy. <laughs> I don't blame you the, with the rivalries. That's me with the the Big East. I mean, I, I like UConn. I, I I ain't gonna lie, but I was rooting for Western Kentucky to get that upset versus Marquette today. I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought that was would have been a big would have been a big one. Wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> Colorado has a better shot better shot of upper, upsetting uh, Marquette. I think I, I think so too. But Western Kentucky made it a, a pretty good run in the first half. It was it was a, it was a very close game. But then obviously Marquette decided to pull away with a uh, with Kolek. He obviously is you know a pretty talented scorer for them. They also have some other players as well. Creighton had a big W for the Big East as well versus uh, Akron uh, yesterday with a uh, with a bunch of all their players just being able to. Trey Alexander, I believe, is one of their one of their guys. He's he's pretty solid. I've seen him play against Seton Hall, and he was you know pretty good. Yep. And they got Kalkbrenner as well and stuff. And then UConn, obviously, coming out and beating Stetson today by a large margin. Um, yeah, and I know a couple of the Stetson guys on their staff. Uh, sad. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy for him. Uh, I was so happy for him because they never the uh, like the staff that staff works hard. Mm-hmm. I know a couple of their coaching staff. Uh, so that staff worked hard, and um, yeah, uh, I was a little hurt about that, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, they the they're, they're all going to get conference championship rings. They won their conference. So that's exactly. Cool. That's that's the fun of it. I think from a smaller school as well is like if you're able to win your conference, if you're able to be there, it's a 
once in a life opportunity to just be at the tournament or you know have your school win while you were there i think that's like just something fun to recognize as well cuz even with duquesne like they hadn't won a tournament game in 55 years so that's just like crazy if you're a part of that you know for that one runner even if you just went to school at that time it's just cool no and it's sad cuz people think duquesne's duquesne's actually a basketball school they just haven't and i know some of the former head coaches from duquesne they just haven't had the Duquesne's had players. They've had good coaches over the years. Other than Keith Dambro, it's just, uh, you know, timing. Timing's a time. It was a different time when they were in the NEC, and then they transitioned to the A10. It, it you know, it, it. They haven't been NCAA tournament good. They've been NIT good, just yep. good. They've all Duquesne's like a historic basketball school. Like, like in the '60s, they've had NBA players. They have a very historic rivalry with Pittsburgh. So. Any of these guys are not new. Like, oh, they're just some. No, 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 no. Duquesne is a Duquesne. Literally, if they invested in basketball ten years ago, ten fifteen years ago, they'd be in the Big East right now. That's that's crazy. They would. I mean, now they're investing it. They just got a new, brand new arena, forty five million dollar arena in downtown Pittsburgh. Uh oh yeah. No, I mean, it, it's sad. It, it's weird. It, like I'm happy, but it's like, dang, this could have happened like twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like you're you're like Duquesne has so much potential, and they have a big rivalry with University of Pittsburgh. Not a lot of people know about that. It's not just Pittsburgh rivals, not just West Virginia or yeah. State. It, it is also Duquesne, like for the city. They play for like a city championship because they're the two biggest schools in the city. More? I didn't. I didn't really know about that. I know my my buddy's friend goes. Buddy's friend's parents went to Duquesne, so I, that's what much as I really know about the school. You know, very proud alumni. Very proud alumni. They're be- basketball people. They love their basketball at Duquesne. I know that for a fact. I mean, they have a little football, but their basketball their basketball history is pretty good too. That's that's amazing. What are your key uh, keys for the second half here for the Celtics? Do you got any? Got to finish strong, got to rebound, and got to limit the turnovers. They have to literally just finish this game strong. Right now, you got a good, you got a comfortable 16 point lead. Let's try to extend that and contain their offense. Pistons are going to get tired. Um, right now, it's, it's a game of just saying, hey, just outlast each other right now. Mm-hmm. We get to see uh, O'Shea Brissett actually getting the start in the second half compared to Xavier Tillman having a, you know, more explosive, you know, kind of aggressive uh first half uh joe missoula now is running with him gotta go gotta go with the hot hand exactly go i like to see it yeah gotta go with the hot hand. don't just loyalty loyalty can only go go for so far yep yeah so chris stops for three that's a big three from porzingis there starting that tempo up early mm-hmm I, I see it. I'm looking at it right now. Um, yeah, big three. Got to, got to get it. Got to get out. Got to get out on the lead right now. This is where you can uh, get take it, pull away. Mm-hmm. Celtics playing some aggressive defense there. James Wiseman. Mm-hmm. Having a little of a little miscommunication with himself there. Mm. Great ball movement. Nice. Nice left hand finish. This is what I'm talking about. Just start out strong. Minute to start out this half strong. Set it tone. Jalen Jalen Brown, 18 points, 9 for 11 from the field. Again, another efficient game. Post All Star break, averaging. I, last time I saw it was around 28 points. It's definitely around there maybe 27 26 but again efficient games as well as peyton pritchard another basket for him at the rim just another efficient game from him as well 18 total points seven assists and again a guy that's regarded as a guy that's you know not a main staple a guy a very quiet guy a guy who's you know quietly on this depth chart here just can hit big time shots and make big time plays takes a drive there on troy brown jr who's you know very bit bigger than him, you know what I mean. Able to to take those mismatches is fantastic. Right, I couldn't agree more. Got twelve people in the stream now. If you guys are here, if you guys are enjoying, make sure to hit that 
like button as we'd greatly appreciate it. Hopefully these guys can just get this done. That's what we need. Jaden Ivey's starting to get hot. Can't have that either. Exactly. That's like I mentioned, the one the one piece that is, you know, very detrimental in, in, in this success here and and for them for them, you know, being able to do so solid. Well, uh, you definitely can't rule him out. And there, you gotta. You can't go one for two, Derek. <laughs> you yep. can't go one. You can't. Okay, got everything back up. I think everything's good to go. Again, we like we mentioned, the free throws is a killer. It has been a killer the last couple games. They're shooting sixty-five percent, I believe, right now with that miss. Even versus bad teams like the Pistons, I mean, we can get by it. We can sneak with it, but. Against good teams or in the playoffs, it can't be happening. No, oh, it cannot. It, it, it cannot be happening like that. But then Derek, on the other end, just gets a little tip there to help on the defensive side with the rebound. So, yeah, very consistent in what he does. Porzingis and just Brissett being in the right spot, even though he's unable to fully come down with that rebound, just knowing where you're supposed to be. With the, I mean, he's a pro NBA player, but just by having not that much playing time is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You would think like a guy like that might not know where to be for the Celtics rotation or know how to react or respond off of certain jump shots, but he's finding his way and clearly recognizes where to be. As you just it's another perfect pick and then cut to the basket for a nice roll to get a easy dunk with no one giving him pressure. I, I don't uh, I don't think I mean you would think but I mean like I said these guys are pros they can figure it, it's easy to pick up you you learn how to manage that and how to pick those things up pretty quickly Pritchard another easy basket driving to the rack there showing off that speed as well yeah, no. I mean, like I said, sh show me, show them what you want. Show them what you're worth. Exactly. And he's, again, this isn't just his first good game that he's had. He's had these great games across this recent stretch, kind of proving to everybody that he deserves to be, a, like, a part of this roster long term and, you know, deserves it. Wow! Deep three there from Jalen Brown. And he's going to force him to call that time. Yep. Yep. That was a deep three. Deep three. By a guy who, you know, the Warriors definitely disrespected him from shooting those threes, but a lot of people, you know, don't really view Jalen Brown as an efficient three-point shooter or know him for that, but he can hit them when he needs to. He is an efficient, but it, that's not mean. That's not saying that he can't make them. Exactly. It's not like his specialty of his game, but he could still succeed at doing it. He can still very much succeed at it. He can very much succeed at it, and that's something you want to look for. Exactly. Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section as well. Let me know what you guys think. Isaac, have you, do you have the Discord? Are you in Discord? No, I'm not on the Discord, unfortunately. Okay. Can you link with me real quick? Yeah, I, of course. Looking at the game and checking uh, checking everything I can. So, Of course, yeah, I can send that to you. I just was just curious because we're trying to get as – as many people as we can obviously in here and like i've mentioned we're going to be trying to do some radio like call-in live streams i know that we've talked about this you know me and you since we're at commercial break we can't break this down i know me and you've kind of talked about it on the side but yeah we're going to start to try to do them in discord i'm going to be like testing out trying to figure out how to do it but starting hopefully next week we can start doing those once a week or twice a week either you know all three of us or just you know whoever wants to do a stream can start a stream get some call-ins get some fan reactions and i think that's great i also think it's great to you know build the community on discord you guys can and, you know, talk about just regular Boston Celtics, talk about everything, you know, that we have here with the Celtics team and everything like that as well, which I think is, you know, just something super fun to have. It's easier to react to than in comments as well, you know, just having, you know, a great spot to talk to people. 
I couldn't agree. I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree. More. Let me see the the code here. Copy that, and I'll send it to you here on Teams. So, but yeah, there's the Discord. So yeah, you can join in. We can have our you know chats. The Celtics chat. Not gonna lie. It's 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 all right. It's not it's not completely popping off yet. We don't we don't got as many Celtics people as I think would like in there. But if the more Celtics people join, the more conversations can be had and the more fun can be you know instilled in there. Right, 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 right. More reactions, more people talking. The more just you know just conversations we can have about the Celtics team. Like we could break down Peyton Pritchard and have casual conversations on how. At the beginning of the year, I thought he'd be a six-man-of-the-year candidate from his great preseason. Now, obviously, I think that's a little bit of bias. I'm not going to lie, but he's, you know, really coming into that right now, into, like, the middle, late part of the season, you know, closer to the end of the season in recent stretch. And again, tonight, 20-point game. And with Drew Holiday, you know, missing his third straight, this is great to see from another, you know, key bench and rotational piece for the playoffs. You got to show, you got to show, you got to show who's ready. got to show. Exactly. And this team is ready. You can tell they're they're way more prepared from last couple seasons as well. Obviously, I think the 2022 season, they were wanting to eclipse that finals run. But some of the guys on the bench and some of our stars hadn't really gotten to that limelight, haven't had experienced that stardom or that pressure, I would say. But right. last year definitely was a little bit of a wake-up call going down 3-0. Obviously, Joe Mazzullo being thrusted into the coaching um Decision right away isn't the best, doesn't have, you know, his mentality straight, doesn't have his game plan set. And you can clearly see with this year that it was the right hire. It was the right decision that the Celtics made because this team is, you know, 10 games ahead of everybody in the Eastern Conference, six or seven games ahead of everybody in the whole NBA. It's just like they're on like their own tier at this point. He's comfortable now. Mm -hmm. He's getting comfortable now. And that's all you can ask for for a second year coach. He's getting comfortable. Exactly. And only to only for him to keep improving he's a young coach as well so he's only going to continue to improve and only going to you know be able to instill his mentality and game plan with the Celtics and with more Celtics coming through right no i couldn't agree more i could not agree more but yeah we got Jalen Brown doing a little bit of a hezy little step back slide into another three Jalen Brown he is on fire. We're definitely giving some Jalen Brown some love here because he is absolutely killing it. 24 points, 11 from 13 to the field. Super, super efficient as Derek White gets the charge right there. Right. Another big time play for the Celtics on the defensive side. And again, Derek White, a guy who on the offensive side of the ball and defensive side of the ball is so consistent for this Celtics team. Hmm. It is a. Uh, He's averaging a steal, averaging a block per game. Definitely working towards his, you know, defensive player of the, uh, not defensive player of the year, defensive all defensive team stature. Right. Yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so awesome. Porzingis gets a nice little put back for himself as well as he's screaming about a foul call, wanting a foul call as the Celtics, you know, are almost up thirty on the Pistons here. He's every right to scream about it. Mm-hmm. Celtics having a little bit of a fumble right there with Hauser and, and Brissett, but they get the rebound. Again, Celtics up 30, but they're still, you know, giving all this effort, giving all this energy, which is another thing you love to see. It's not like they're slacking off. It's not like they're slowing down in any in any which way. As I say that, the Pistons get a turnover and get a slam, but... <laughs> they're playing well offensively. Just, just keep it up. Mm -hmm. Porzingis again, mid-range. See, that's the versatility you love to see. Porzingis is such a highly effective scorer and brings so much versatility to this team. Like, able to hit the mid-range, pick and roll, pick and pop, being able to shoot corner threes, being a, a shot blocker and rim protector, being a paint beast and, you know, just being a low post scorer. He's added so much to the Celtics team and adds so much for the other players for defensively as well as people need to prioritize him when he gets hot and it leaves... Guys like Pritchard and Hauser wide open for threes and allows the Celtics to succeed in that way too. Right. Right. I, I mean, whew, whew. I'm hoping Peyton just keeps turning up. I'm so mm -hmm. sorry for lost words. I'm just trying no to. No like, worries. Keep turning up. 
No worries. Jalen Brown looks like he might have gotten fouled there. Got a little got a little swat to the face. But again, we got 15 people in here. 15 likes. Is every stream just keeps getting better and better. So we appreciate you guys. First stream that we did, you know, had 10 people. Last stream had 20 at its most. Now we're having a consistent of 15. That's just fantastic. We keep going with the streams. We keep growing with you guys. So again, we can't thank you guys enough. That's all we could ask for. Thank exactly. you. God. Just being part of it. Peyton Pritchard with another three. Misses that one. But Luke Cornett, again, perfect positioning. Even though he's not able to come with the rebound, just the effort. That that's what I love to see out of the Celtics is effort. Because those are the type of guys that I love to that I love. I love Jason Tatum. I love Jalen Brown. Those, you know, they're obviously the two star players, but with Marcus Smart and his effort that he gives and just how much he gave for the Celtics on hustle plays night in and night out, that's what I want to see out of my favorite my favorite basketball players and out of my favorite team. And we see that with the Jays as well as they want to succeed on both sides of the floor. Jalen Brown really making that defensive nod and wanting to be a great defensive player a statement this year. And he's clearly been showing it as well. Right, right, right. That's all you could ask for. He misses the free throw, unfortunately, for the Celtics. And we get Tillman to come back in. Looks like he might be coming in for Brissett. Yes, he is. So Tillman will get some more action. We'll get to see him. Maybe some Nemus Kata minutes tonight, too, possibly. He's with the team. Bing. He played two minutes, and he's gotten one stint versus the Blazers. He played two minutes. He got, like, one point, one rebound, one assist, one block, or something like that. But, again, the last couple of games, we just have not seen him. And it's because of the emergence of Xavier Tillman, I believe. You know, I feel I think they feel a little bit more comfortable with him. They feel that he's more NBA-ready than Nemus Kata. But having Kata as that 15th roster spot will be just great depth, too. Oh, yeah, it would be. It'd be uh, great depth. And I think with Isaiah Thomas getting picked up as well, I think that's the, the smart move for the Celtics. Right. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Jalen Brown getting locked, not locked up, but guarded by Evan Fournier. Send them to the double team now. Peyton Pritchard's wide open, though. Oh, unfortunately misses. Mm. Oh. Uh, got an issue with the uh, meeting. The meeting? Yeah, got an issue. Okay. In so, minute, minute. at the end of the quarter, I will end, we can end this one, and I can just, I'll call you, I think. I think we might be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And I think then we should be good. If we switch during commercial break, that might be probably the, the easiest way to work around it, and then Next time for the stream, I'll figure out how to get it set up with the display capture for Microsoft Teams, so then that won't be an issue for us. Well, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm down. But yeah, the Celtics, 20-point lead with around three and a half minutes left in the third quarter here. Jalen Brown really taking control of this game as he has a little bit of a bad pass there, a little bit of miscommunication, but really taking control of this game for the Celtics. Again, 17 people in here, 16 likes. Total of 281 views for a Friday night versus the Detroit Pistons. I'll take that. That's a that's a positive, positive outlook. And as we bring this up and this, let's see if we got any more chats down below in the comments. Any more people speaking up about this second half? Again, Pistons on a little bit of a run here. 11-3 run, but the Celtics still majoring in control. And that's the thing. Teams can have a little bit of runs here, and the Celtics, as long as they can maintain that lead, it's fantastic. Jalen Brown, another tough finish. Right. Bullying. Bullying this Pistons team down low and I getting knew. to the you rack. Got a little brother of them now. You, mm-hmm. you- you're almost near the end of the third. You got a little brother these guys and let them know they're where their place is. Hey, you guys aren't there yet. Exactly. Defensively. Mm-hmm. Honeydew commercial. You got honeydew? No, I don't eat honeydew. No, no uh, like the coffee place? Coffee do uh Have you had it before? I don't know if it's a New England thing or it's just a New England thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had honeydew yet. It's okay. not that it's Yeah. Not- not in, in the DC area. You've had so. Duncan though. Oh, of course. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, those are the. Not better than Krispy Kreme, but I like Duncan though. Yep, I, I I have to give Krispy Kreme its credit. Obviously, best best donuts in my opinion. Yeah. Sorry to any of the guys from Boston. I am from the DC area. <laughs> oh, and 
and I'm a little in, and more specifically in Virginia, so I'm a little more on the southern side. I'm like with Jake Cole. Y'all can have Duncan. We, Virginia down. We like uh, having that. <laughs> I have a question for you if we want to get a little bit off topic at the commercial break with the Wizards here. Uh, the bill, obviously, with moving the Wizards to Virginia got revoked. Uh, they're not allowed to move to 2047, I believe. Is that am I not mistaken? So that was just not with relocating. That was with moving the stadium, right? That was like the whole... What initially happened with the Wizards is the Wizards initially obviously tried to move to Virginia. Virginia said no because I live in Virginia. It wasn't going to benefit the entire state. That's why Virginia can't have a full pro sports team because all the money's all it's going to stay in North Virginia. It's that money wasn't going to help the rest of the state. It just wasn't. Um, now DC enacted a clause because the Wizards tried to break out of their initial lease that after they resigned it in 2007 and 2008 that. Um, from what I understand is that they can no longer, they can't renegotiate or cannot leave, um, leave Capital One till 2047 since okay. they, since they tried to leave without, by breaking the lease illegally. So, um, it's kind of great, but Ted Leonis is still trying to look to move to Maryland. Um, and I, at this point, I just, just think from a DC from a DC resident from a DMV resident from the D, from the a DC metropolitan resident if you can't find 400 million dollars to renovate your ta- renovate your stadium I don't know <laughs> you got to got to figure out something else yeah the guy's a billionaire uh, like you shouldn't be asking public funds to renovate your stadium when no one's asking when Maryland and Virginia is not asking for the wizards to move here with the exception of Yunkin who's delusional <laughs> Um, who's ironically he's a basketball head that's why I know he wanted the Wizards here he played college basketball at Rice so he's like yeah no I want the Wizards here nobody wants the Wizards in Virginia yeah. and no- so the Wizards need to stay where they're at, at Capital One is like the MS- is like the baby brother MSG it's in downtown it's you know and sorry about the play I play we were trying to get back to the commercial we're going back to it yep yep don't worry about it we're still doing the play-by-play we have been you've you've left and then you didn't see that's what it is Jalen Brown with a three again raining threes for our boy Jalen Brown he's absolutely on fire him and Peyton Pritchard are killing it tonight for the Boston Celtics 31 points 13 from 16 from the field super super efficient night from him very efficient. That's all you can ask for. That. Mm-hmm. That's all you can ask for that. Just stay efficient and stay poised. You guys are up big right now. Just finish this quarter strong and then cru- not cruise, but just keep going at it. Keep attacking at it. Exactly. Jalen Brown with another shot. Rims out. Luke Cornett looks to for a foul, and he is going to get one called on him. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah, you got to stay out of foul trouble, Luke. Got to. Mm-hmm. I, and I think foul trouble is, just, ew, you know, my my thing is I feel like sometimes the Celtics, um, I think they're mature enough now since these guys are Jalen and Jason are in their prime. I, I hope they pass on the message. Do not get too complacent with your lead. Yep. That's something that we've had a lot of problems with. We've matured with it a little bit this year compared to last, but it's something we need to work on. Derek White with the miss flow. But Tillman fighting for that rebound there. Oh, Fortunate pass by Tillman there. Leads to a steal for the Pistons. But Tillman getting the start tonight has looked decent, but nothing really jumping out with him tonight in you know his first start with the Boston Celtics, which again, a guy who comes in midseason, something he needs to, you know, feel comfortable with working with this roster. Right. Kind of finding his rhythm and role. Sam Hauser with another big three for the Boston Celtics, taking this lead up to 22 points. This man's on fire. Obviously, we were just talking about the Wizards you saw on Sunday night before he got injured, tying the Celtics, almost tying the Celtics record of 10 10 three-pointers made, which was a big thing for him. Probably would have broken the record if he did not get hurt. He was absolutely on fire. But like I mentioned, he's just been an insane addition in the growth. Is great. He's growing. Uh, defense, he's still got to work on. He's still got to grow on that, but uh, he will get there. Exactly. And his his continue to grow as a player is just fantastic. That's just something you want to see from our players coming from the G League. Because I know that you mentioned you're kind of the, the G League guy joking around on here, but you have talked about the G League a decent amount on this on this channel. And he's one of our main guys that has come from the G League in recent years. As 
Tillman, I don't know why he's on Marcus Sasser there. Um, yeah, that's a weird one. I think we're going to have to find out in the press conference. Hey, uh, what's up with the assignments? <laughs> what's up with the with this assignments? Because that, that, we weren't expecting that. Nope. Tillman has guarded some guards and versus Milwaukee did a decent job, but a, a, a full-up point guard at the three-point line, I don't know if that's the right message. Jalen Brown gets fouled again. You know, the Pistons, like we mentioned, you were saying Jalen Brown needs to keep attacking them. He has continued to do that this quarter. And the Pistons have no option to just foul him because they can't stop him. Right. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Got to find a way to stop him. Got to find a way. Yeah, Celtics taking that 20-point lead. They were almost close to a 30-point lead, but it is around 20. Jalen Brown, 32 points, team leader in scoring. Derek White, six rebounds, team leader in rebounds. And Peyton Pritchard, eight assists, leading the team in assists for the night. Three key starters for the Celtics' success tonight. Um, I, I think just, been, just you're up, you're almost up 30. Extend that lead, man. Exactly. Exactly. Nope. Coast. Don't do not coast right now. James Wiseman gets a, a key travel right there. Monty Williams looking a little frustrated. Mm. It's okay to get frustrated, but come on, guys, you're up. Yep. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. Yep. Yeah, Jalen Brown bringing the ball. Celtics six turnovers compared to the Pistons thirteen. Helped them in this game. Been able to get a lot of second chance points and get a lot of steals to turn those into points for the Celtics. Finding Sam Hauser in the corner for three misses, but another great look by Jalen Brown. Celtics up 104 83. Like Isaac and I have mentioned, keep the gas pedal going. Keep this full throttle. Keep giving them, you know, that gas. Peyton Pritchard. Derek White, Jalen Brown, keep feasting up on these Pistons. Let's get up to a 30-35 point lead with around halfway through to go in the fourth quarter. Then let's throw some of our other guys out there like Springer, Mihailuk, and let them run around. All right, the meeting has ended, so we're going to get Isaac back in here again. Here we are. Again, I apologize for the disconnections here. I will get this fixed for the next stream that we did, that we that we do. But like I mentioned, we're gonna get this out to our boy Isaac and get him into the stream again. And once he is back. We will be ready to go to break it down. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Ron, still no play-by-play. -play. I feel like you're you're joining here at the wrong time, man. We've been giving play-by-play -play for most of this game here. We were having a little bit of a chat because this is our first, you know, live stream, Isaac and myself together. So it's going to be a little bit more not just breaking down the game and going over everything. We're going to be, you know, having a little bit of conversation here back and forth. But, yeah, we, we, we've, you know, been contributing to the to the play-by-play -play for sure. And, you know, been making it a, a major staple for for what we want to be talking about. Like I mentioned, let's check how many people we got in the stream here. We got 14 or 11 people currently sitting in the stream. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the stream here that we've been, you know, been able to break down for you guys. We greatly, greatly do appreciate it. Before the fourth quarter starts, like we mentioned, the Celtics have been on absolute fire tonight cooking up and doing fantastic things so i'd appreciate it if you guys or if you guys are enjoying the stream to hit that like button as we're going to get a little bit of a like spike going like we mentioned we want to get as many celtics fans into the stream as possible so we would appreciate it if you guys hit that like button to the 14 of you guys that are currently sitting in the stream thank you so much to the 300 people that have actually tuned in to the 16 people that have hit a like thank you guys for coming by again we greatly do appreciate everybody jumping in here it is a friday night we're playing the detroit pistons we're up 30 points but everybody that's staying tuned we do appreciate it like i mentioned celtics big game tonight doing big time things and it's actually been the celtics key success having peyton pritchard and all those guys be able to go off tillman playing some great defense there, able to help out Derek white perfect rebound
and they get the steel. Cornet. Pass to white. And with the lob catches, Luke Cornet. Again, this bench really turning up for the Boston Celtics, really being key pieces for the Celtics' success here in their last couple games. Pritchard with another rebound. And like I said, streams will only continue to get better. We'll, you know, this is our third watch along stream. First one doing a duo. So next couple times that we get the stream up going as Derek White gets an air ball, we'll get to fix the perfections, get to fix the tweaks, get everything ready to go. Like I mentioned, if you guys do enjoy stuff here down below in the Boston Celtics area, join the Discord, follow us on Twitter as we greatly appreciate it. The Twitter we've been lacking on a little bit the last couple days, I won't lie to you. We try to do repost, try to give up as much as we can. But with the Discord, we're definitely trying to build up the community, definitely trying to build up the chat spaces in there, trying to get everybody to have a good time being able to discuss Boston Celtics. So if you want to talk to me about Boston Celtics, you feel like I don't answer your comments or you feel like I don't reach out to you that much, join the Discord. You can ask me questions there. It's a lot easier and a lot easier way to communicate with a bunch of other Celtics fans as well. So we wait for Isaac to get back in here. Greatly appreciate him, you know, joining the stream, hopping on, giving, you know, his thoughts and takes for the Boston Celtics. Shiv Patel says the Celtics hate Wingstop. I don't know what. Oh, I know what you mean by that. Yeah, the Celtics do hate Wingstop. They're not going to let the Pistons get a W so they can get free chicken. I got one comment for you, Shiv Patel. One comment only. Grow hair, my guy. Luke Cornett comes out of the time right here. But I look at in some minutes tonight, which has been, you know, a big time thing for the Celtics. White able to, you know, pass the ball to Porzingis. Porzingis back up oh, to Tillman. Tillman for three. Rattles out. But Pritchard again with that effort, man. This is the key thing that I keep mentioning about Peyton Pritchard. A guy who, you know... Wants to be there, wants to, you know, fight for those offensive rebounds and stuff like that. Derek White getting a little pushy and a little shovey down low with James Wiseman. Jared, is that Jared Roden again? It's Jared Roden! Seton Hall alumni! I'm, a, I'm happy for him. What's up, Isaac? We got you back here. Sorry about that again, but we'll get you all situated back up in this. Okay, can you hear me, Bruce? Yep, I can. Got you. We'll get you all set up again. I will. Need a second. I'm dropping out. Just a moment. Here we go, though. The Celtics got that 27-point lead around four minutes left in the fourth quarter. No really fouls here. Sasser goes to take a rebound shot. Rebound by Wiseman. He's fouled down low. Porzingis and or Derek White is going to get the call. Pull this back up. Pull that back up. Sorry, I had that off. I didn't realize. Uh... And then we got this. And that's 14 people in the stream. Again, thank you to everyone that's tuned into the stream, everybody that's been chatting away, having a good time. We appreciate you guys being here. Celtics, you know, trying to keep this alive here in the fourth quarter. Pistons trying to claw back. Fournier makes a tough basket. Celtics still up 25 points, though. Right. Right. Um, I mean, hopefully the Celtics earn this big dub and, you can look at it and you know it's a good movement exactly Derek White with another tough three-pointer for the Boston Celtics there again key key difference maker for this Celtics team this year key X-factor as well for this Celtics squad 
So he's been, you know, again, major, major contributor to the Celtics' success. Celtics get another stop on there. Timeout from Joe. Peyton Pritchard a little frustrated. Looks like he wanted to get a little bit of a run there, but. Right. Couldn't agree more. Um, is everything working? Is, there we go. Okay. Just making sure that that's all good. Perfect. There we go. This should be this should be a solid. And this should be the last, you know, mishap or miss call that, you know, goes through. I don't think that another we're gonna be here for another forty minutes for this fourth quarter, hopefully. Mm hmm But like we mentioned, we got thirteen people in here currently watching the screen 300 and a lot of people that totally have viewed it which again is just absolutely fantastic celtics here at a commercial break celtics have been you know be able to keep that fire been able to stay hot i'm gonna look, take another peep at you know the box score just to see you know who's doing some effective things obviously pritchard obviously Derek white obviously you know chris uh jalen brown has been you know killer but i just want to look and see their efficiencies to see you know where how how we're how we're shooting because it seems like we're shooting at an efficient rate on the offensive side no no we, we're playing well we're playing well that's all you can ask for. we're playing well um we just gotta finish this game strong and i've been saying it i know it sounds like a broken record sorry chat but <laughs> I, I, it, it really comes down as simple as that just trying to play strong and trying to hold down a lead because you don't want to give anybody any hope exactly exactly like we mentioned though guy uh let's see we got Jalen brown 13 for 17 from the field Peyton pritchard 8 for 14 porzingis 5 from 13 Derek white 4 from 12 hauser 5 for 13 4 for 10 from 3 just you know some efficient, even when you look down the lower roster, Brissett 2 for 2, 1 for 1 from 3, Cornette 1 for 2 from the field, Luke 1 from 1. You want to see Luke if he's coming in hitting his shots. You don't want to see him, you know, chucking up shots, going 3 three for 8 from the field. And to see that is absolutely fantastic. All right. Very fantastic. And again, again, another guy who's at the, you know, doesn't get that much playing time for the Celtics at the bottom of their roster when... A guy who's a, a stay ready guy, if you want to, you want to call him for from Joe Missoula, a guy who you know needs to come in and stay hot when his number's called, and he's been doing that. That's all you could ask for. No, he's mm -hmm. he, he's doing his role. He's doing his job. Exactly, and the Celtics have had that this year, especially, which is really really great. Tillman working in the low post here, trying to get something going. Passes back out to Pritchard, looks for a mid range shot. Cornette playing some safety defense. Tillman unable to come off this, get free from the screen, but it's a missed three. doesn't really matter. Around halfway left to go. little more than halfway to go in the fourth quarter. Celtics with that 20-point lead. Again, fantastic games from a plethora of guys as Derek White goes for another shot. It's freaking, I mean, deservingly is getting frustrated for not getting a call there. Right. And Celtics get a buyback call right there off of a bad screen from Shemes Metu on Sfi. Xavier Tillman going to inbound here. Let us know what your guys' reactions are down below in the chat as well. We have a bunch of people in here, but... No one really reacting with us, giving their thoughts and opinions. We got 14 people in the stream currently right now, you know, watching. You know, again, thank you guys for tuning in and showing your support. Jalen Brown getting ready to check back in for the Celtics. Spark some more of this offense up. Seema Luke, you know, getting that sit. But again, 
one for one from the field in his shots. Efficient. Right. Derek White floater. One of the most made shots by Derek White. One of those cash money things you see. And Wiseman with a big dunk. He's had a very big inside presence tonight versus the Celtics. Right, right. No, he the, the has. He's had 22 points, 9 rebounds, 10 for 12 from the field. Oh, nice pass and great reaction by Toman there. Um. Well, that was a weird pass to Wiseman, but again, Tillman on Sasser taking the taking the mismatch. Cornet on Sasser now. Wiseman with the bucket again, scoring another. Two points. They have more points in the paint than the Celtics by 10. But the Celtics have that big lead just for the ability to be able to hit threes and stick to their game. Yep, play play their game. And they're sticking to those threes, and it's looking like it is working out beautifully based off the score and based off how they're moving. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brown had a little bit of a bad air ball there. That's where that's my little bit of disgusted face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. It, it does look a little disgusted based off I'm looking at this. Pritchard dribbling out the clock, slowing down the game. Celtics, you know, Jalen Brown for three again. Misses, but, you know, just playing a little bit patient now. Leads getting a little bit closer for the for the Pistons, it's now 18. And so Celtics need to preserve more on that defensive side, lock in on this side as Derek White gets a nice little block. Right. Again, averaging at least one a block a game, one block a game is absolutely ridiculous. Hmm. That's true. Kristaps Porzingis. Again, big X factor for this squad. Oh, get it's pu pushed. <laughs> really? Oh boy. Goes to set the screen. Mm -hmm. Porzingis, just easy cash. I'm giving you a play-by-play. -play. I'm I'm trying my best. At least I'm I'm watching the game. Unless uh, do you want me to be Mike Gorman? I can I can I can. I mean, if you're watching this for a play-by-play, -play, uh, I can I can try my best to be Mike Gorman, but I'm not uh, like a full-bred commentator. I'm gonna have a little bit of conversation and, and digest and discuss what's been going on. Peyton Pritchard gets substituted. Brissett's playing some defense here, trying to, you know, lock up James Wiseman, steps up to Cade Cunningham. Playing some good defense as well. Mm -hmm. playing then defense. then fights for that rebound as well. Gets a little confused with Derek White and Kristaps Porzingis there, but... Derek White dribbling the ball up. You know, Celtics trying to work down the clock here, trying to preserve it, trying to keep this game out of reach so that the Pistons can't hit a couple shots and get back in as Kristaps Porzingis. Tough, tough finish there for Kristaps. Great finish by Kristaps. Uh, unbelievable stuff. Uh, unbelievable stuff by Kristaps. And again, Celtics getting feisty on the defensive side, getting a nice little steal there. Pass back to Porzingis. Porzingis with a nice little pump fake. Back out to White. Right. Ooh. Jalen Brown working his game as well, getting to the rack. Nice kick out to Hauser as the shot clock's expiring off front rim. 
No one able to get the rebound as the ball lands nowhere near the Boston Celtics, but that's A-OK. All right. That is A-OK. Not able to get a stop there as we get a foul. Timeout. Two minutes, 48 seconds left. Celtics up 22 points. You know, it's been a fluctuating 18, 22, roughly around 20 for most of this quarter. So the Celtics, you know, keeping their keeping their food in front of them and still eating at the same time, I guess, you know. Still getting their buckets, but still maintaining, you know, a decent amount. Not really pushing extra. Obviously, as the Celtics, now that we're at commercial here, we can kind of dive into this. Uh, Celtics taking on the Bulls tomorrow in a back-to-back. Tatum and Horford sit tonight, so you expect Horford and Tatum to be available tomorrow. Probably no Chris Stops, maybe no Jalen Brown. We'll have to wait and see for Drew Holiday. Obviously, the Bulls have had a, you know, weird season, I would say, uh, with the Zach Levine injury. Uh, very great emergence from Kobe White. And from Ayo Desumu from their young guards, DeMar DeRozan being a good leader. But a team that's, you know, on the fringe of being a low round playoff. It's like, I hate to say it, load management is going to take a place where some guys are going to be scheduled, hey, you need to sit out this game because you overdid your body. So if it's what we're assuming, who's going to sit out, Jalen Brown, and then Al Horford's going to be back playing this game, and then Jason Tatum's going to be back. Um, if they haven't used off their leave, I guess. Ah, the Bulls, they're scrappy. They're not. You know, they're not really going for a high contention, but they play tough. They play hard. Uh, probably a little more more polished than this Pistons team. Billy Donovan is a coach you don't want to go in there and estimate. Got to play a little better game going into the start of this game uh, for tomorrow. Exactly. I think they have to, you know, really show off their defensive prowess tomorrow. You know, kind of enforce that defensive mindset on this Bulls team. Because like you said, they're a tough team, a bit of a physical nitty-gritty team as well. So it's going to, you know be a high implication and I know that the Celtics have played the Bulls in a more recent game but they had that infamous play in tournament game where the Celtics were hacking Drummond and fouling Drummond to make sure they could get those free throws and get that play up, uh, playoff differential to make that play uh not play in tournament excuse me the uh in season tournament they had you know they were trying to fight for that so obviously I mean it wasn't the last matchup that we played but Bulls fans and the Bulls don't really have the greatest resume with the Celtics because of that so they're definitely going to want to come out and get you know a big victory against the Celtics squad who if they get the win tonight will have eight straight wins which is you know another big win streak to have and if you're the Bulls you're definitely a team that wants to come out and stop that right right that's true that's so true you want to send and swing that momentum I feel for for the Celtics you know kind of disrupt the Boston Celtics there couldn't agree more they're like we are we are back here um i'm gonna be honest i think this is the guy who i mispronounced his name possibly at the uh at the beginning i don't know his this is the guy i don't i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know who's shooting free throws for the pistons right now they've had they have an, uh, a bunch of guys but springer's in jd davidson's in so the celtics look like they have you know waved that white flag saying hey we're winning but we got walsh springer jd davidson and name is kata in so a bunch of the young guys you know this is where we want to see them shine nice lob to kata from jd davidson getting that main collect main celtics connection going yeah no i mean they just punched the they just uh speaking of the main Celtics, they just clinched a big playoff um uh, berth uh hopefully they'll win a hopefully they can try to compete for their first title uh, first G League title. Exactly. I saw that as well. That was something that I wanted to mention too. But just saw Namus Kata play some great defense with there with Jordan Walsh getting a nice little steal to help out the Celtics as the Pistons come out unsuccessful on that offensive drive. But yeah, I'm sorry. I like this little lineup. Mahai Luke nice passes to Kata. Kata, they're they're feeding Kata, trying to give Kata some minutes here, trying to give him a little bit of life, which is nice to see. Maybe that maybe that's the the game plan is to warm Kata up, get him a little bit used into this lineup the next couple games and Make sure he's locked up for that playoffs for insurance. Right. Right, Cause, right, right. Because I don't think he's a guy who, you know, is going to be playing, you know, 10 minutes in the playoffs, five minutes in the playoffs. But he's a guy where if we do see some injuries in our biggest hole of the front court and, like, are in the front court, you know, needing the most hole replacement, I think insuring him is a great thing long term. Right. And he right, excelled right. in the G League. He He was really, really solid for us. Extremely solid. Those guys were, um, those guys were great 
and I'm I'm proud of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I mean, that's all you can ask for. The G League's supposed to be that preparation period, and they get and they get stuff done from there. So exactly. Jaden Springer going for a little bit of a block there. Is that? I mean, no, I don't know if that is Buddy Beheim, but it might be. I know that they have him on the Pistons G League. I don't know if he got called up. Number thirty-five. Bob, possibly. I mean, he's a he was a natural shooter in college. Yep. Dad, Great dad. passing from that team, from that unit right there. Mahaluk Takeda to Walsh for a nice dunk. Awesome. And Walsh, some great, great stuff as well on the defensive side, getting up there, going for that block, going for that good contest. I know that you've talked a little bit more about the G League. You, you know, talked about Joel Walsh a little bit more. We haven't really seen him much with the Celtic squad, you know, really playing that much because they've had some other guys that they want to, you know, roll in. But I think, you know, for the future of this team, he's a, a key piece for some of the Celtic success. And, you know, could be one of these guys like Tillman or Springer who's, you know, on the lower end side of the contract, a little unexperienced, but when the Celtics need him for that depth, when they do need his number, maybe next year or the year after, he could be a guy that could step in and be one of those stay ready guys. Well, you can ask for. Yeah, I, I think that's what it is. He's got to figure out his role. Mm-hmm. He's not going to team. He's just got to figure that, up, that that part out. And I think like with the whole new CBA and all those restrictions and stuff with second apron teams, you're going to see teams like the Celtics and other championship contenders building similar rosters like the Celtics have done this year. All right, all right. That's all you're gonna do. I mean, you just need to add pieces, and he's a young piece that's healthy. If he can figure that out where it needs to go, then yeah, hell yeah, exactly. JD Davidson just hit a big time three for the Celtics. This ball movement from this, you know, I want to call them third unit, I guess, because it's kind of you know the ender bench guys, you know, and we've had so many guys out really tonight with our first starting unit that kind of mixed in, but. They they are really excelling, like ball movement wise, defensive wise. I know it's the Pistons, but this is things that you want to see out of your young guys. That again, like I mentioned, don't really get a lot of playing time. They don't have that warm up. They don't have that energy to come out and play for two to three minutes. Give it your all and just show your sparks, show some life, and really give the Celtics fans something to be happy about. None of these guys have come out here and shot horrendously, taken any of these bad shots. They're working well as a team. Right. Maybe it's because they have some of that chemistry from the main roster as well, but Walsh just takes a three, and Kata gets the rebound and gets another slam. Name is Kata in these last two, three minutes right here, man. This is what you want to see. Like, small sample size, but again, absolutely fantastic. Right. No, and that's all you can ask for, and big dub. Yep, big, big dub here. I know that we, you know, in the first quarter, it was a little bit close. You were getting a little scared here with the Boston Celtics. They were, I believe, down two going in at the end of the first quarter. But the Celtics, you know, were up five, middle of the halftime, or middle of the second quarter. We mentioned taking that big time out, going on that big run. It happened. The Celtics took a big lead going into half. Third and in the second half, they maintained that lead. Pistons came back a little bit here and there, maybe brought it down to 10, 15 points. The Boston Celtics came out victorious tonight versus the Detroit Pistons in a 129 to 102 victory here. We want to, you know, before we close out here, you know, say thanks to everybody that did join the stream. At the moment, we have 12 viewers, had around 345. We got to 16 likes. So, again, thank you to everybody that, you know, did join the stream. Thank you to everyone that, you know, did communicate in the chat here with us on Celtics Digest. Like I mentioned, we do these streams here, you know, every single night for a watch along. Unless I let you guys know, we'll have a stream going. If it's me, or if it's Isaac by himself, even possibly, you know, like tonight with me and Isaac going together, we'll have these types of streams going. We'll try to get Josh into involved in some of these as well, possibly. You know, we're just here to break down the Boston Celtics, have a good time, watch the game, enjoy it like that. You got any takeaways from the game here before we sign off and say goodbye to everybody, Isaac? Don't play sloppy in the first quarter. Don't give the Celtics fans and the Celtics faithful a little scare like that in the first quarter tomorrow with the Bulls. The Bulls will try to capitalize that and try to take over that, especially uh, especially in this time of year when you know when they know certain lineups are not going to be in the scout, certain guys aren't going to be playing because they're trying to rest and trying to get that rest off. Yeah, no. Exactly, uh, exactly. Like you mentioned, that Bulls team, you know, and I kind of mentioned too, is fighting for a play on spot. They want to be, you know, a competing, a competing team. So they can end the Celtics' eight-game win streak, you know, get a stamp on that and, you know, kind of start a little bit of the rumblings there. But they would love that as well. Before we hide out, we want to just give this comment up here from Shiv Patel. Keep it up. Love the content. Thank you, Shiv Patel. We greatly appreciate you guys tuning in. T-Snizzle, Shiv Patel. We had a bunch of comments from a bunch of our fans tonight. 
that we you know we're chilling here having a great time we appreciate you guys like always like i mentioned we'll be back here again doing more streams so we'll be having a bunch of fun here and you know like i mentioned join the discord follow us on twitter to engage with all more celtics content from bruce velez and isaac here we'll catch you guys in the next stream peace out peace out